Hello and welcome back. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about plutonic processes and uh, here I've got a specimen from the Isle of Rum. And this is a very intriguing specimen. It's from a layered plutonic intrusion. We talked a little bit about that in the lectures. And uh, the Isle of Rum is dominated by a tertiary uh, layered intrusion is about 60 million years old. And what we have here is a unit boundary. And uh, here in the lower part, we have a feldspar rich rock, which also has a, some olivine. And here's the olivine, here's the feldspar domains. And uh, this is a troctolite, or the local name is alevalite, after the hill of Haleval. And um, alevalite is a, a feldspar rich uh, troctolite with a little bit of olivine, and the feldspar tends to be rather calcic. So, alevolite is not widely used these days. Troctolite is the more common term, and this is a feldspar rich gabbro in the widest sense. Now, then up here we have a peridotite. This is a rock that's rich in olivine, and uh, it has a little bit of feldspar, but it's dominated by olivine. It's a peridotite, effectively a feldspathic peridotite, and uh, this material uh, below would continue for quite some time, many, many tens of meters, and uh, the material above would also continue for quite some time. So there's a dramatic change in the mineralogy or in the modal proportions of minerals present here at this unit boundary. And intriguingly, you see this dark line that separates the two. This is a layer of uh, chromite. Chromite um, is a spinel type mineral uh, that has chromium, it's an oxide. And um, we discussed that it could happen that from magma mixing processes, we might actually set the crystallization sequence in a magma chamber back to go towards chromite and uh, olivine again. And this is the old style interpretation here, that we have a magmatic system that produced these rocks here due to dominantly crystal settling. And then a new pulse of magma came in and it brought with it um, more mafic compositions. And this then gave rise to initially chromite crystallization, a thin layer of it, and then mainly dominantly olivine crystallization. Down here we have a little bit of a trough, and this is quite intriguing. It almost seems that, if this is true, that um, we had a bit of a topography at the bottom of the magma chamber. Now, let me turn this rock around, because there's a weathering surface on the other side. So, are we getting a good shot here? Yes, that's pretty good going. So, and here we see the feldspars, and it comes out quite grainy, and it's got some olivine, and here's um, 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 the gray of the feldspar, quite clear. And here we have the chromite layer, and here we have the brownish olivine here at the surface, is a bit more weathered. The iron rusts a little, the iron in the olivine, and gets this brown touch to it. And here we also see a topography defined by the chromite. And uh, intriguingly, we see something else here. And let me kind of try to get you yet closer here. And what we see here is that there is a chromite vein that's cross-cutting this. And uh, Recent work by a number of people led by Brian O'Driscoll from Manchester has proposed that the chromite in rum in the layered pluton may actually form by reactions rather than by crystal settling. And it's not for me to say that uh, one uh, opinion is more right than the other, but what I see in this rock is that we certainly have unit parallel chromite here, and then we have cross cutting chromite that obviously must be younger than the layering in these rocks that comes from potentially crystal settling. So much of the uh, feldspar, in fact, is actually also quite pervasive in the ground mass down here. And we looked at some thin sections in class. So there is some cumulate feldspar, but there's also a ground mass poikilitic feldspar, a plagioclase that may enclose portions of this. And uh, this was my little summary of the rum rock here from the lower slopes of Halleval, where we have this rather spectacular place where we have 
the alveolite, the troctolite, grading into the pyridite along a relatively well-marked boundary that is chromite. This is a protected place, by the way. So I got special permission for taking this sample. So uh, please, uh, if you ever go there, go easy. I could slice a piece off if you're desperate to have a slice. I remember that uh, Brian O'Driscoll got the other slice from this side when he started to work on these rocks. So this other portion has been used for research. So thank you very much for your attention and I'll close here and I say thank you for your attention and enjoy the last look of the rock and I'll be back uh, next week with more information on rocks etc. Bye bye, good luck, all the best.